My name is Fatima Manji and I'm a correspondent at Channel 4 News. Um, I made a very informed career decision at the age of eight uh, in my back garden when I said I was going to be a journalist. So I just used to practice reporting live from the front line. Um, but no, I, I started my BBC trainee scheme after I graduated and I just learnt on the job from local radio to regional telly then did a bit of world news um, and then in 2012 I moved to Channel 4. I, I, don't know, I don't think I'd pick out one tough moment. The real difficulty is when there's a breaking news story and everything's happening and there's all kinds of you know really important things to say, that's actually quite easy because you know what to do and you're just going through the motions and it's busy and you're just telling people what's happened. The difficult times are when you're working really hard on trying to get a story or trying to get an interview and it's just not happening or it's a really quiet period and you still have to make something interesting of it. That's the real challenge, I think. I think it's definitely an issue. Uh, it's shocking and the amount of colleagues across the industry that I've spoken to who found out that they're being paid less than a man for doing the same job. Um, or women, un women who are afraid to go in and ask for a pay rise. I think there's a culture of saying, oh, well, I, I don't want to kind of put my head up above the parapet. And it needs to be addressed. I don't know if quotas is the right way to do it, but the onus can't just be on individual women or women's networks to do something. There has to be something that directly addresses the problem and works out why it's happening. Because I think one of the issues you find is you've got women doing incredibly well in their careers in their 20s and 30s and then sometimes they go off to have a baby and that's when they see either their pay drop or their career drop. And I've seen a friend in that situation very recently um, and I think it's incredibly frustrating that she's having to fight for being paid to do the job that she's doing. Um, I think it... We definitely need a, a more formal system of mentoring. I have a number of mentors and that's been brilliant, but sometimes you have to go and seek them out for yourselves and that can be quite difficult. I think if there were a more formal system in lots of workplaces, that would be really helpful. If you could just look to an older woman and say, actually, I'm in this situation. How do I get out of it? What do I do? Um, the other thing is I think we need to look at, particularly when women go off to have a baby, well, sometimes it's not go off to have a baby. Now people have to look after elderly parents or all kinds of reasons. There's something that's definitely going wrong there. So whether it's making sure that job shares actually work or that people are able to work flexible hours in an industry like mine, that's not straightforward because the news doesn't stop. So that is a something that I think really needs to be looked at in a serious way, not in a kind of, oh, great, you know, we've got two people doing a job share and it works fine. And in reality, those two people are struggling. I think it's really important for men and women, whoever you are, to know your strengths and know your value. And sometimes people will try to devalue you and that can happen in different ways and whether that's sexism or racism or bigotry or something more banal, um, it's very easy to feel knocked back by it. But what you have to remember is your value in the broader workplace and, and what you're really bringing to it. And if you remind yourself of that, then it's easy to say, actually, I can do this and it matters and you need me just as much as I need you. The, the thing is, it, discrimination is a really broad word and what does that mean? Do I feel that I've been passed up for opportunities by employers? I don't know because I don't know what informs their decisions. All I know is I've tried my very best to say I'm a journalist first and foremost, I'm interested in facts, I'm interested in being sympathetic to the, to the people that we're interviewing and understanding a story and communicating that to the audience. And real journalists, real editors have taken that seriously and not cared. Um, that said, I think there are a lot of stereotypes that people have when they see someone who's visibly Muslim um, and they find it quite shocking. Um, that I would also be a kind of ballsy in your face journalist at the same time. In a way I've worked that to my advantage and I'm not afraid to say if you need to be held to account I'm going to hold you to account. I don't care if you think I look like a demure little Muslim woman. Um, I'm going to be in your face. I 
I think it's so important that we see modern Britain on our screens, whether it's on the news or in films or in dramas, and there's a massive way to go on that. And when I was younger, it used to be that if you'd see anyone non-white on television, we'd all gather around and be like, oh my God, look, you know, it's so-and-so. And, and that's changed, uh, and it's improved and it's good, but there are all kinds of um, people from all walks of life who still feel that they can't get into journalism, who can't get into television, and I think that's incredibly sad, and we're not in a place where um, people with talent are always recognised, and I think that that needs to change. And it matters because when young people are growing up, if they see someone who reflects them, who looks like them, or who comes from a place that they do, you know, I went to a state school, I come from an ordinary town in the country, and there's a lot of people who think, well, if she can do it, I can. And that sends out a massive message in terms of confidence to people, especially young people when they're growing up. I, I really try to balance up the professional, not too distracting, but at the same time, a little bit of me. Um, and it's quite hard to get that balance right in news because you don't want to distract from a horrible story that you're reporting on, but equally, you want people to know that you've got a personality um, and I think that comes across generally in how I dress. And, and in terms of fashion, my favourite era is the 1920s and I am constantly inspired by the 20s. I think it's important to believe you can be anything you want to be and to have that mindset. But at the same time, sometimes self-confidence and self-belief isn't enough and we need to recognise that there might be structural factors preventing people from doing well. And as a society, we need to address those as well as instilling people with confidence that they can really do what they've set out to achieve.